All right, here now I'm gonna talk to you about the reactions of alcohols, and specifically we're gonna talk about what happens when you react an alcohol with uh, PBR3. So again, if I were in class, I would be like, so what's the name of this? And you guys would struggle for a while, theoretically, but hopefully eventually you would come up with the fact that the name of this is phosphorus tribromide. It is a covalent compound, that's why we um, uh, worry about the subscript. The subscript for three becomes a prefix of tri. So we're going to talk about what happens when you react an alcohol with phosphorus tribromide. So here's a good alcohol. I'm even showing you that it's got a chiral center. Uh, let's name this alcohol. So this is uh, one, two, three, four carbons in the chain. The alcohol is at carbon number two, so this is a two butanol. You gotta tell me the chirality of it. Um, if this were coming forward, it would be an R because priority one, two, and three, so it would be going this way. But since it's going backwards, it's an S. So this is 2S butanol. So we're gonna react 2S butanol with phosphorus tribromide. I'm gonna give you the full mechanism here. In fact, let me erase this so I can get a bond. Uh, but I'm never going to ask you the full mechanism for this reaction. This is one of the reactions that you just need to know. So we're going to react this alcohol with phosphorus tribromide. Br, Br, Br. And then one pair of electrons. Okay, so what happens here in this first step is the alcohol attacks the phosphorus. And in attacking the phosphorus, it pushes the bromide away. This is kind of like an SN2 type reaction. After that reaction occurs, the products look like this. So this chiral center hasn't been touched yet. So that still is going backwards. We have OH, P, Br2. This has a positive charge on it now. And we also have the Br minus floating around. So what we've really done is just like we do a lot with alcohol, we react it with something to turn it into a better leaving group. So in this case, this whole thing now is a better leaving group. So the bromide is able to come in from the backside to push the good leaving group away. This is an SN2 reaction. Since this is an SN2 reaction, you get inversion of stereochemistry. Um, and then the compound that's left behind is this phosphorus and bromine containing sort of alcohol looking thing. So the overall picture is an alcohol becomes a bromide with inversion of stereochemistry. The alcohol reacts with PBR3 to turn it into a better leaving group. The Br- minus comes in from behind and inverts the stereochemistry. So alcohols with PBr3 become inverted alkyl halides. A very similar thing is going to happen when we react alcohols with SOCl2. This is what SOCl2 looks like. I lost there, here we go. SOCl2. The name for this is thionyl chloride. It's an important reagent. We're going to use it a lot. So I really hope that you can get the name and the structure together in your head. Um, I've had a lot of students in the past not do this and it's frustrated me, especially when we get into second semester and we need to use it again. So this is thionyl chloride. So we're going to take an alcohol I'll give you some stereochemistry here and we'll name it. So this is one, two, three, four. This is a two butanol again. Now we have to give the chirality. This is coming out at us. So this is in the R configuration. So this is two R butanol. We'll react to R butanol. Oh, let me get myself a, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need a bond eventually. No, I'm okay for right now. We're gonna react this with the thionyl chloride. Now again, you don't need to know this mechanism. You just need to know the overall reaction, but I'm gonna show it to you anyways in case that's helpful to you. So what happens here is the alcohol group attacks the sulfur 
and pushes one of the chlorides away. Let's draw the product of that reaction. We haven't touched the stereochemistry of that carbon center yet, so that stays there. And we get this sulfur-containing molecule that has a positive charge. And we also have chloride. So again, what we've done, we've transformed the alcohol into a much better leaving group. Now, a lot of the time, pyridine, this is what pyridine looks like, is also added to the reaction. Pyridine is a non-nucleophilic base. Uh, non-nucleophilic base. Bases mop up protons. So we've got this like proton hanging off over here. Pyridine is added to remove it. That gives us O-S-O-C-L. Uh, and we still have chloride ion hanging out. So that really is just to mop up any protons that we have. It keeps the um, uh, reaction mixture from becoming too acidic if you add a sort of a non-nucleophilic base. Pyridine is usually used for mopping up um, those kinds of acids. Now, what happens here? is an SN2 reaction. So this is very similar to the reaction that we just learned with the PBR3. We've transformed the alcohol group into a very good leaving group. And now we have this nucleophile that's going to come in from behind to push the leaving group away. Since it occurs in an SN2 fashion, we have inverted the stereochemistry. So again, I don't care that you know this full mechanism. All I care is that you know that thionyl chloride and pyridine will transform an alcohol into a chloride via inversion of stereochemistry. Now next up we have tosylates and mesylates. So this is TS chloride is tosyl chloride. MS chloride is mesyl chloride. Let me draw out tosyl chloride for you. Here are my notes. Tosyl chloride looks like this. It's another sulfur containing compound. So we have a sulfur containing compound on one end. There's the chloride. And then on the other side is toluene. Toluene is a benzene ring that has a methyl group on there. So this is why this is called a tosylate because you have tosyl or toluene on this sulfur containing compound. You can see the similarity between it and the thionyl chloride in the last slide. Mesyl chloride, you have a chloride, once again attached to a sulfur, and then over here you just have a methyl group. So methyl sulfur chloride, that's a, the mesylate. So let's see what happens when we react chloride, alcohols with tosyl, tosyl chloride and mesyl chloride. So again, um, we're going to do propanol. We're going to react it with tosyl chloride. Uh, these reactions are also usually ran in the presence of pyridine. Ugh. Like I told you in the last slide, pyridine is a non-nucleophilic base. So alcohol reacts at sulfur, pushes chloride away. The product of that reaction looks like this, OH, positive charge, and then the TS group. Pyridine then mops up base acids, so it will deprotonate that to form. Here's the full compound. You can also abbreviate it as TS. So the whole thing though is why? Sort of who cares? What's the point? Why did we do this? 
Well, I'm going to go to another slide here after I add one in, and I'm going to show you why we react these things, why we form them into tosylates. So i got to get myself a new slide. Perfect. All right, so let me um, draw in here again that tosylate. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not right. Tosylate. The chloride's already gone. So just like we do with um, alcohols, a lot of the times, the whole point of this is to turn this into a really, really, really good leaving group. Tosylates are phenomenally good leaving groups. Now, of course, if I were in class, I would ask you, why? What makes a tosylate a good leaving group? Well, let's figure it out. Let's react this with nucleophilic bromide. So I'm just pulling in bromide from somewhere. We're gonna push this away. This is gonna be like an SN2 type reaction because that's a primary carbon. Really, really good leaving group. The product then would be the bromide. But let's look at the other product that's formed. After the tosylate is pushed away, we form this compound. So now, why is a tosylate such a good leaving group? Because after it leaves, it is stabilized by resonance. So because the tosylate is stabilized by resonance, that's why it's a really, really good leaving group. Mesylate is as well. So you can transform alcohols into compounds with good leaving groups and then react them with nucleophiles. So a sort of a shortened way of writing this, again, I don't really care that you know what a tosylate looks like, I don't care that you know the mechanism, but this might be what it would look like. Alcohol reacts with tosyl chloride to form the tosylate. Then we react the tosylate with something like, oh, we haven't done a cyanide in a while, with a cyanide in an aprotic solvent like DMSO. Then the cyanide comes in, pushes the leaving group away, and you're left with one, two, three, CN. So tosylates and mesylates are very good leaving groups. They're very good leaving groups because after they've left, they have really stable structures, and uh, so it can participate in SN2 reactions.